Hi there. Thank you for joining us for our September show of The Place to Be Oshkosh. I'm your host, John Neiman, with COTS in Oshkosh. Thank you once again. I, it's hard to believe that it's September already. Where did our summer go with all the activities that we were enjoying? Um, we're glad that you could be with us. As always, I'd like to start by thanking our sponsors who make this show possible. So thank you to COTS uh, Transitional Housing in Oshkosh and in Appleton, uh, housing for men and for women, uh, a great program. So check them out. And also Karen at the staff at the Oshkosh Herald, a wonderful community newspaper. You wanna know what's going on? Check out the Oshkosh Herald. And then our set design is by Brian at Ubloom. Uh, his store is located on Witzel. And check out his outdoor garden center also. Uh, he's well stocked now with all the fall plants that you need from bulbs uh, to mums to everything else. So check him out also. Uh, where can you see this show? You can see it on Life TV on Spectrum. Also, you can search Oshkosh Media on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and YouTube. Just search for um, Oshkosh Media and our show will show up. And be sure to like it uh, when you watch the show. The weekly schedule, if you want to see other replays of the show, go to oshkoshmedia.org and you can check out the schedule on Life TV. For my opening segment, I wanted to talk a little about something that COTS started to do in downtown Oshkosh. It's called Care Team. So COTS partnered with the State Street Center, which is located in the old Oshkosh Bagash building downtown on State Street. And every Monday and Friday, we take a walk. We walk downtown and we help clean the city streets, um, mostly of cigarette butts. Um, but it's a nice chance to get out to get some exercise. Um, and so if you feel like walking with us, we're every Monday and we're every Friday. We, we meet at the State Street Center and we walk. We divided downtown into three areas. Um, the convention center area is one. And then the Sundial Grand Opera House area is two. And then the library, the human services building, the Y is three. And so we alternate cleaning up those areas depending what's going on in, in Oshkosh. Um, usually after Waterfest, we'll take the convention area or if something's going on at the Sundial. So it's a wonderful chance to give back to our community and also to get a little exercise. So if you're interested in more information on our downtown Oshkosh care team sponsored by COTS and the State Street Center, just feel free to uh, call me or email me. Uh, my number is 920-279-9873 or my email jneeman at appletoncots.org. Uh, thank you and also a huge thank you to the wonderful team here. I just speak and things magically happen. So uh, thank you today to Jake and Scott, our crew, I'm helping put together the place to be Oshkosh. I also want to say that the State Street Center is supported by the Winnebago County Department of Human Services. And uh, Julie, check it out. Check Julie out down there. It's open from 9 to 3, Monday through Friday. It's a great chance for people to go. Um, they do lots of, lots of cool things for people in recovery. Um, any information you need on COTS, by the way, too, just give me a listen. But otherwise, um, we're going to go to a commercial break, and when we're back, we're going to be talking to Dale from the Military Veterans Museum. <laughs> Maria, so how's work? It was fourth period biology. Our students just weren't getting how easily viruses spread. So Ms. Bell and I had them role play a zombie virus outbreak. By the time they had all learned the lesson, <laughs> All the living were dead. Hey, how's your job going? That big sales meeting I planned? Next year, I might get to go. <clears throat> Welcome back. This is the September edition of The Place to Be Oshkosh, and I'm your host, John Neiman. I'm very privileged now to have a very busy person with us from the Military Veterans Museum, Dale Anderson. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So let's talk a little about your role at the Military Veterans Museum. 
Well, I currently am a member of the board of directors. I am membership volunteer chair. I am chair of the marketing committee, and I'm also a docent, practically a jack of all trades, master of none, basically. So do you want to, because you said a word there that um, I used to work at the Paint Arts Center, and there's a word there that a lot of people don't know what it means. What's a docent? Docent comes from a Latin, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it right, docere, something like that. Basically is to teach. So what our docents do is they will guide and they try to teach people. In our case, they try to tell stories of military history that our museum is providing. So I'm kind of old, Oshkosh, born and raised in Oshkosh. And if I say the word Park Plaza, some people will know that it was a nice mall that mm -hmm. we had downtown. But the military, uh, Veterans Military Museum used to be in Park Plaza. When Correct. did you guys relocate to your new building? The new, new place we moved into would be eight years ago in April of this year. So. And do you want to tell our audience where it's located? 4300 Perbersny Road. I even pronounced that right. <laughs> um, it's about a mile and a half, two miles south of the EAA Museum. But many people know where that is, but rather know where we are. Yeah, so. definitely. And there's our wonderful crew again who put up the the graphic for the Military Veterans Museum. Uh, there is the address and there is the phone number. Um, uh, also, you can like them uh, and f on Facebook and find out more about them also or the website. So let's talk about the museum. Um, how many paid employees are there? None. We are an all-volunteer organization. Can you say that again? None. Zero. Is that not amazing? No. So the board, the bo how big is the board? We have... 17 on the board now. We just picked up two new members. So 17 on the board. They're around well, somewhere between 30 and 40 fairly active volunteers, and the numbers go a little higher okay. after that. So how long do your board meetings go having that many board members? Any, anywhere from a half an hour to an hour and a half. It depends wow. on whether we, whether we keep our focus. <laughs> yeah. So how... How do people get picked to be, do you handpick people to be on the board or how? Pretty, pretty much has been handpicking people, people that we have seen within the organization we th would think would be a good fit. Okay. That's kind of how I did and we're, we're trying to reach out. We've had people suggest we think this would be a good person for the board and we've invited them on. That's and right. Leadership Oshkosh usually gives us, has regularly given us a person. We just picked up a new person here in the past That's month. one cool thing about the Leadership Oshkosh adult program is there their attendees join the boards of different yes. organizations. So Oshkosh Media got one, got one too. Mm -hmm. Happens to be my daughter-in-law, uh, who is the communication <laughs> director for the school district. So she's now on the Oshkosh Media board. But I think that's really cool because it gives those attendees of, of Leadership Oshkosh a chance to learn more about the Oshkosh organization so then they can share mm -hmm. that information with others. And we've been fortunate, several of the Leadership Oshkosh people have stayed with us for a number of years as board members or as volunteers. So that's a good, good plug for Leadership Oshkosh program is that they, they get to know more about our wonderful community and then they stay on to help out with their various gifts and talents. So let's talk about the museum. What drew you to the Military Veterans Museum? Uh, personally, I've always had a little love for history and military. So. I looked at several museums over oh, about a 200 mile radius. I originally am from Medford and oh. after, and, and I chose here, and I chose this museum, so. Oh, very, very nice. So you talked about the, vo the volunteers. Let's talk about docents. Um, so what do they do? Are there, are, if, if somebody, can somebody just walk in and get a tour or do you have to reserve a tour? Do school groups reserve tours? How does that we, work? We have a docent. We're open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at this point. And my plug here will be, if we had more volunteers, we would be open seven days a week. We don't okay. have the volunteers. They are on hand. If somebody wants to come in, our cashier will offer them an option of having a tour if they want one, or they can choose to walk through the museum on their own. And at that point, the docent will pop through every once in a while, any questions, or maybe they'll point something out that... Okay. Something they know that really isn't that obvious. Okay. So, so th there's a picture on the screen. So, do you get school groups that come then? So COVID shut us down for a oh. couple of years, okay. but we are starting to get back in. I think this. I'm not sure if this picture was early this spring or not. Yeah, this one, the one I'm looking at right there, is that was this this spring. So, we're starting to get schools come back in. Uh, we've had you know Oshkosh North and West come in. We have upwards of 100 plus kids come in at one time. 
Uh, wow. We are, we are having scout groups are staying to come back. We have had them in the past. We've got, in a couple of weeks, so we've got 250 50 passenger buses coming in for, for uh, basically, they are going to walk through. They're not going to take, have an actual tour, but they're, okay. we will be available to talk to them. So if, if somebody's interested in a tour, they're going to end up talking to you. Is that right? Uh, they will actually end up talking oh. to Stu Tribby, who oh, okay. is our outreach chairman. He takes care of that and our current board president. Okay. So he will take care of that. So if they call the number on the screen. Correct. 426-8615. Uh, Anybody who's interested in a tour, yep. but you will take on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You will take walk-ins if Correct. they just okay. They walk in. We will take them through. We will take them okay. through any time. Okay. So how long, or does it depend? How long is an average tour like for a school group? Well, we usually if we do a school group like these big 100 students schools, we we'll split into four or five groups, and then we'll go about 15, 20 minutes per group and rotate okay. them around okay. rather than all the way through. Standard tour, anywhere going from a half an hour to an hour and a half. It depends on okay. when I do it. Usually I watch for eyeballs rolling and then we move on. <laughs> so it's, yeah, some, some people will get very engaged, ask questions. But some mm -hmm. want a quicker, quicker tour. So. so what do you find that people are primarily coming to you for? What's the question on their mind or what are they looking for with history? They just want to see, most people coming in probably do not have that much of an understanding of military history, so they come in to learn what, what, what the okay. history of our okay. people that have served is all about. So do you want to talk about this? Okay, this is, this is a new, it was a new edition six years ago already. Uh, there's actually a Gun Trucks of Vietnam video available on History Channel that talks about this in detail also. Uh, Roger Blink came talk to us about seven years ago. And after a discussion with our then president, Dave Kirsten, we told him that if he, he, would, he wanted to build this truck, this is a replica of the truck that he drove in Vietnam back, back in the 60s. Okay. It's an actual replica. He was the third driver of the gun truck. So he wanted to do something to honor the people he served with and the 359 Transportation Company that it belonged with. We told him, if you get the truck, we will, help, we will build it for you. And that, that is, was the result. So it's... Okay. Now, am I am I right in understanding that truck was in a movie? Uh, it it was. It's a documentary. Yeah. Okay. It was in a documentary called "Gun Trucks of Vietnam." Okay, that's what and it they, is. They actually talk about gun trucks from Vietnam to current day. Because a truck like that in Vietnam, they did. Army didn't issue those trucks. They took a cargo truck. The guys in the companies and they made them. They. The, the phrase they use, in, if you were in military, midnight requisitioning, basically they stole stuff. So they stole armor plate, they, they got a Gatlin, got a, a minigun, Gatlin gun off of a crashed helicopter, 50 caliber machine guns. They built these trucks and whatever they thought a, an actual defensive gun truck would be. The mission of these trucks was, the, in this case, was to accompany 5,000 gallon tankers of gas, diesel, and particularly jet fuel. Jet fuel was for the 1st Cab Division in Vietnam. So their job was if there was an ambush to go to that ambush site and lay down suppress the fire while the convoy got away. Wow, is that amazing? And history was one of my worst subjects uh. in school. <laughs> <laughs> but the way you talked and the way you explained it, you made it interesting, okay. which I imagine is what, why the school groups and all, all of that come. Mm -hmm. I do have to say hats off to you guys too. I, I host the 4th of July parade that um, okay. that Oshkosh Media televises. And you guys are always a staple in that parade. We always can count on the Military Veterans Museum to be there with your mm -hmm. vehicles to represent, which I think is really cool. So thank you for that. Okay. Thank you. We do send, we do send, we aren't sending as much as we used to, but we still try to get some vehicles mm -hmm. out. That one, the Flag Day event, Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. And Brutus is very popular with people in the area, so. He's Brutus, and we have a, gu a little gun jeep called Little Brutus. Uh, that also goes. Okay. So, so um, and now we're looking at another picture. This is so. This is part of the museum, right. part of the vehicles. So, how big is the museum? I you, people pass it constantly on Forty One because right next door is the tech. Right, right. So people pass it. How big is the museum? Boy, I couldn't tell you. It's about 50 by 200 feet, if I'm recalling correctly. Okay. Between 50 and 60. And, and so people people can do a self-guided tour as they go through. Are they able, um, is it 
looking with your eyes, or are they able to touch some things? We have a number of things we're touched. We don't have any problems with touching on most, on a lot of things, rather. Of one example, we've got, we just found a pair of Civil War McClellan type saddles that are actual Civil War. We kind of have a sign, please don't touch that. Okay. Some of the older artifacts we don't want to touch, but people can get close. There's not a lot behind glass there. Uh, we will okay. let people close and look, just don't tear things apart, basically. Okay. And how do you get most of your items? Are they donated? Some are donated. Uh, you notice in that picture, that was the overhead view of the back area, okay. the, the vehicles. Eight of those vehicles were donated by the John Kinzel Foundation. John Kinzel was an owner of Lee Beverage up in the area. Okay. And, and when he died of cancer, the foundation was formed. They, they say eight of those vehicles belonged to him, and, and they, they actually donated money to help build that building when it first went up. They did. So. So was he just a lover of history? Or? Yeah, he, is, he was in the 32nd Division. So he, he was a, a sergeant in the 32nd Division, okay. served, and he, he, liked, he liked collecting vehicle, vehicular type okay. of things. So. so if somebody has artifacts, would they be able to call you if they want to donate them, and you yes. guys would decide yes. whether they could be part of the collection yes. or not? Yes. In the past, we would take anything that would come in, but we have over 22,000 artifacts cataloged. But my guess is two to three times that we don't have a clue what we have in storage, hence the saddles we found eight months ago. So now we ask people to send us pictures or... You know, you know, we, we will look at, we do pick up some nice items. We recently picked up a World War II office, off, German officer's uniform, very nice condition. About a year and a half ago, we picked up a World War I uh, infantry of, uniform. So we do get nice things come yeah. in, but the, the, the days where somebody can just bring a 50-gallon garbage bag full of stuff, we, we're kind of trying to stop okay. that because we don't have the room for the material. And I do remember that because I used to go a lot when it was at Park Plaza, and I do remember people just coming in and dropping off items there. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it takes a lot of work to, to go through them to see what condition they're in, and then if you're going to keep them to archive them. If you're not, what do you do with, them, with the items? So do you change out your displays? We're doing it a little bit. At this point, we are still adding displays. So since COVID, we have had a major change in the past two years. The, the, the picture that you saw there, that's the back part of the museum where the trucks are. In the front, we have an area that goes from the Civil War through current day where we have uniforms, various artifacts. And we're, we're still adding on, still coming up with ideas for adding. But eventually, we will be rotating some items in well, the okay. displays. All right. So let's talk, because you're a very busy guy, let's talk volunteers, because Oshkosh is a really giving, giving, generous community. And there are people out there um, who want to volunteer, but they just don't know what's open. So, um, and I've had that before at, at other places. They thought um, maybe somebody wants to do something behind the scenes. They don't want to be out mm -hmm. in front. What are, all, what are some of the areas where you're looking for volunteers, where it necessarily wouldn't be history? Right, right. We, we have people that are working with the collection, with, with data entry with the collection, helping sort the collection. We have people that are working buildings and grounds, whether it's mowing the lawn or possible painting or cleaning. Uh, our website actually has, if you look in the About Us, there's a part about volunteering and it will give a full list of all of the types of jobs that we that we all have people do. Okay. Again, our biggest need at this point is cashiers and docents just to be open. And, and we don't expect people to be either military background or history background. We will, we will help, help you train and be comfortable in, in doing it. Okay. So um, are you guys familiar with, with the group that Mike Luter leads from the university called Go Volunteer? I believe we are communicating with them oh. now, because as far as from a buildings and grounds standpoint, I believe they're, yeah, they're, they, they're um, working with our buildings and grounds oh, chair. Oh, cool, because um, that group used to be called, a long time ago, I'm showing my age again, it used to be called AVA, Alliance of Volunteer Agencies, and we would get together once a month, all the different not-for-profits, and we would get together and talk about what are your volunteer needs, what do you need, uh, and now it's called Go Volunteer, and they still meet once a month, and they have a, um, a website. He's located out of the university, so they have another website that you can put volunteer um, options on or needs mm -hmm. on, and they get a lot of university students who do it that way, okay. too. So that's a, great, that's a great option, too, because sometimes 
you know, um, when I was at the Paint Arts Center, people would think that you had to either love art or love horticulture to volunteer there. But like you said, there's so many other things that you can do, grounds maintenance, mm -hmm. uh, newsletters, mailings, yep. um, like you said, uh, cataloging stuff, data entry, you mm -hmm. know, all the, those wonderful avenues to have. Yeah. So um, if you're interested in volunteering, you also can contact me. My information's always on at the end of the screen, and I'll pass the information on to Dale. But this would be a perfect, this would be a perfect thing for high school students to do because you need volunteering to get into college. And so this would be a perfect thing to do. Because right now you're open the weekends. Correct. What are your hours on the weekend? 10 to 5. 10 to, wow. I mean, that's a pretty good time frame. Mm -hmm. Pretty good time frame. Okay. And um, so you need cashiers. Yep. And volunteers to be? Be docents or guides, basically. So to be a guide, do you do some kind of training with them? They, or? they kind of follow around our more experienced docents and they learn on the fly. It's, okay. We have so many exhibits and items going now, it's impossible to touch on every item that's in the building anyway. So I like what you said because at some places when you hear the word docent, you're already kind of scared off. And you know that you're a teacher and you know that you're a leader. And then they give you this 400-page binder. <laughs> they say, read it. Yeah. But for me, I have to learn by visibly seeing things. Mm -hmm. And shadowing someone and learning about it, picking up what you need to know, and then turning it into your own style is a great, a great thing. So there's another thing. Um, if you're a retired teacher, perfect job for you, you know, to be a docent and to pass on history uh, to people. I think that's I think that's really cool and wonderful. So I also wanted to touch on your board. Um, usually, when people apply at the various places I've been for volunteering, uh, and I'll say, "Have you volunteered anywhere in our community?" They will always neglect church, schools. And boards because they don't consider that volunteering okay. because they have such a passion for it that they just do it but board members give plenty of time and expertise yes. um, in there well I'll just look at you and your schedule of what you're doing and you're retired <laughs> <laughs> which one day I hope to retire but I, I keep thinking if you're that busy of a person in your life you're gonna stay yep. stay that busy Really cool. Anything you want to talk about? Anything new going on there? Or are the numbers have picked up, you said, since COVID? Yeah, we're running about a 80 to 100 people a weekend right now. Pretty decent sales through the gift shop. So it's Oh, it's there's a gift shop, too. We have a gift shop. It's a lot of very, very good variety. Our, uh, our gift shop manager has done a wonderful job. So, so are there any Oshkosh-related items, or are they all mi more military? Mostly military. military. I don't think okay. we have anything no. Oshkosh at this point. You know, that's one thing that people always ask when they come here is, where can you go and get anything that says okay. Oshkosh on it? So do you guys have a relationship with EAA at all? Not a lot. I mean, we... We send them rack cards, they send us rack cards, and it, and we've got some people that have been, some of our docents actually were volunteers at EAA at one point, so. Which I think would be a natural, a natural progression. You're more the history, which I think is truly important. And so you have, the, the history starts with the Civil War, Correct. is that right? Civil War, right, right to current day, so. Okay, and then is there a big display with the Vietnam? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, that gun truck is, uh, yeah, the, the, a lot of it revolves around it's with the 359th Transportation Company. And the 359th had a reunion here three years ago. They're coming back next year. When they were here, they named our museum the home of the 359th Transportation Vietnam. So, so we are trying to tell that story as okay. much as we can. So we've got the gun truck, the Jeep, a tanker that would have been defended in that, and a number of artifacts that okay. are Vietnam related. And you know what, what I find interesting doing the parades or going to the, the processions, the Memorial Day procession, Veterans Day and all that is the group is getting smaller and smaller. Yes. And it used to be, you know, that they would be walking through the, through, and then now they start riding and there's just less and less people. So mm -hmm. what you're doing at the museum is important because you're preserving, you're not only preserving the history, but you're honoring the men and women who fought for us, who gave their lives for us, so we can enjoy all the freedoms that we have today. So thank you for that, and thank you for your wonderful board um, for giving of your time to do all of this. I think that's really great. 
And so we're talking about volunteering here and we're talking about the museum is easy to find. It's right off of 41, close to EAA, right off the frontage road. But I think this would be a chance for people um, if you want to learn more about history. Um, and you know what, what I think is funny though too, a lot of people who were born and raised in Oshkosh have never been to certain things in Oshkosh like the public museum, like the Paint Art Center, like the military museum. It's always in their backyard, mm -hmm. but they never take advantage of it. And I think this is a, is a great thing and a challenge for people. Let's, let's go out and support the Military Veterans Museum. You know, right now you said Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 10 okay. to... 10, 10 to 5. 10 to 5. Um, they're looking for cashiers. They're looking for volunteers. They have a gift shop. Who does not love a gift shop? Um, I think that's a great way. And again, on the screen right now is their address, their phone number, 920-426-8615 for our radio audience. Um, I just think it's important um, to give back and to promote those things that are, that are huge in our community and our benefit and, and our military and our history is so very important and I, we appreciate that. So what did you do in your past life before all of this? I, I worked for the state of Wisconsin as a food inspector, public health sanitarian for 21 years. Oh wow, so this is like really different. Yes and no. <laughs> Still gotta deal with people. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's interesting too because that kind of I guess prepares you for tours and all that because you are you are dealing with a lot of uh, different people. Mm -hmm. So how long ago did you start with the mu museum? Did you say? It's almost seven years. It'll be seven years seven January 1st. Years. So. And are you on the board till you decide not to be on the board? Is well, if, they keep, keep, if they keep voting me back in every three years, yeah. So every three years? Every okay. three years we're uh, eligible. And okay. I would be more than happy to turn over some of my committee chairs if anybody wants to come in. Which, which I think would be important too. So for, for someone who maybe can't um, do something during the day or they're working, being on a board or being on a committee is a great way to still serve. You can use your talents, use your ideas. Um, and I think that's the great thing about volunteering in general, is you can do what you want to do. And I, and I love the idea that you're retired, but you are really, really busy. All that stuff does not fit on your name tag. No, it doesn't. <laughs> At all. There's, so. just, there's just two on that. So. <laughs> but once again, we're, we're so glad. So this is Dale Anderson, a board member with um, the MVM, the Military Veterans Museum in Oshkosh. I encourage everyone to check it out. Go to Facebook, go to their website, Check them out, see what they're all about. Um, as Dale said, they're open on the weekend, something to do now that, you know, Waterfest is gone, we're in the month of September, you're looking for something to do Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, 10 to five, it would be a great chance to, to check out what's going on at the Military Veterans Museum and to get out there and to volunteer. In closing, I just wanna thank our guests for today. I find this very, very interesting because Oshkosh is full of so many wonderful programs and businesses and museums. Um, I guess that's why we're known as Event City. Um, but if you're interested in volunteering or finding out more, you either can call the Military Veterans Museum or my contact information is on the screen right now. John Neiman 1078 at gmail.com is my personal email. My personal phone is 920-279-9873. Um, if you know of an organization that would like to be on this show, The Place to Be Oshkosh, also please feel uh, feel free and contact me. I'm so appreciative that you joined us for our September edition, edition of The Place to Be Oshkosh, and have a great rest of the month. Happy September.